Welcome back to Miami World Art. This is just an update video on the progress of some of the artwork that I'm working on. Uh, as you can see in the background, this is the second piece of my 18 piece collection. And there's sub pieces or sub series within the pieces that I'm doing. This is Charday. Uh, my first attempt at Charday. I have a three piece set that I'm doing. So three different pieces of Charday. And I just basically started this on canvas. It's gonna be black and white and gray tones. And it really, this is just practicing my, my um, skin tone and my blending. Uh, let me just grab some of these brushes. I've got some brushes that are just recycled brushes that I was actually painting my house with this brush. And it's kind of, kind of a, a feathery type brush and it's been used on a whole bunch of home painting projects and I'm, I plan to use this like just kind of trim it down some and see if I can bring this kind of back to life just to do some fading between as a, like a dry brush to fade some of the skin tones some of the shadows so I'm using this and I got that idea from buying these I bought these on Amazon I bought a set and I'll leave in a, li a link in the description. And there was like a, it was like a four or five brush set. And there are these um, makeup type brushes. And these are specifically for blending. So I thought it would be cool just to try some older brushes that I already had and see what, what happens with those. These are really, 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 really uh, flexible. The bristles are not stiff at all. And they work really well, but I really haven't used them. And I think it's probably a good idea just to use this, this older type brush to get an understanding of how the blending works with these feather type brushes and then get more precise with these newer brushes. So just to preserve these brushes, I will start off with using the old brush and just see what effects I can get and then fine tune those effects with the brand new brushes that I got off Amazon. But I think these are really cheap. These are like seven bucks for a set of five. Uh, maybe even cheaper, maybe like 550 or something like that. Uh, and really good deal just to try stuff out, just to get an understanding. So if you watch some of my other videos, this is uh, Miami World Art. This is an art studio in the Miami Design District, Wynwood area. So Wynwood Walls uh, area of Miami. And basically uh, this channel is just my journey of converting my living space into an art studio. This is like the art studio part of my um, my space and I do all my work here. I've got other videos where I kind of show you my paints and my desk and my layout and my tools and stuff, uh, how I make my frames and all of my frames are handmade. So I make these frames myself and then I stretch the canvas over um, and I put it all together myself. So everything you see here is, is just you know, from scratch, I'm putting it down. So this is like, uh, so, you know, almost four feet by almost six feet is a bigger, piece that, that I wanted to work on and I just wanted to capture Charday in her you know while she's singing and just get that feel and it's a really it's a it, it's it seems like it's a simple piece because it's just black and white but to get that emotion out of her facial expressions and to really bring through her expressions while she's singing is a challenge and I'm just getting back into painting after years of not painting so this is just my you know, my practice getting back into it. And I've always, you know, loved Sade as, a, as an artist and I've always listened to her music. And as soon as I, I listened to her music for the first time, I, I fell in love with it, probably just like a lot of people. And I followed her through the years and I've always thought she was an amazing artist. Uh, so this is my kind of tribute to her. I'm gonna do two more pieces or a piece like this and another black and white piece. And then I'm gonna try something, uh, another style with her, 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 some of her portraits or a portrait of hers and just see if I can bring, make a set out of it, like a three piece set. So this is this. I've gotten really on far. the Prince piece, if you guys watch some of my other videos. really stuck, like I mean for a long time on that particular piece. And that was the, my first piece. This is only my second piece. So it's not like I have, you know, tons of pieces, but I just wanted to get out of the, process of painting prints and getting it right and I found that I was really in a 
uh, perfectionist trap where I was just trying to be perfect with the piece, uh, the Prince piece, and I thought it would be a good idea just to change up what I was working on, the subject matter, the actual piece that I was working on, because I was just really tied into this Prince piece and trying to make it perfect, and it wasn't coming out the way I wanted to, and this was a great opportunity for to switch the pace of, of things and just start with a whole different piece and then come back to the Prince piece and see what I could apply based on what I learned from doing this piece. So, And I think that's the strategy that I'll do going forward. I don't see a reason why you have to finish a piece. I, I, I think it's totally fine to start a piece and then take it as far as you can take and then put it down and start another one and put that one down and start another one. And some people might say, you know, finish it, go from start to finish with one piece. But I just don't think that's, there's no rule that says you have to do that. So I'm going to just go through a number of pieces. So I plan to finish this one because it, it seems like it's a little easier to do. But if I get stuck in it and I get, it's in my head too much, I will start another piece. And, and I really got a really good feeling when I started this piece and I saw this piece and I had the Prince piece up on, on my wall, it really gave me a, a sense of accomplishment and progress to see two pieces going. So I want to duplicate that again and I'll do this one and then I think I'm going to start another one. I have plans to do a Lewis Hamilton, uh, Formula One driver Lewis Hamilton piece. I was doing some research this morning in terms of figuring out what piece I was going to do or what the inspiration piece was, or my subject piece, and, and then and I think I'm going to create one, uh, opposed to just seeing something that I like, like a picture, a photo of him, and then reproducing it or recreating it in, in a painting. I think I'm actually going to create something based on some different um, images, put something together so it's unique, and then paint it. So that's kind of the goal. Uh, I, I guess I can mention that it is October 7th, 2024 so uh, not too far away from Art Basel Art Basel is the first week of December so in terms of painting and having artwork ready for Art Basel it is you feel the pressure you feel the pressure if you want to be in a situation where you can participate in, in Art Basel in some way shape or form and say hey here's my work of art or here's my body of, of art uh, on my body of work and present it in front of a group of people that would be participating or checking out Art Basel. Um, Art Basel being, you know, in terms of Wynwood only being like 10 blocks from here. So that's my goal is to have five pieces done for Art Basel. I really wanted to have more pieces done, but as I got into it and then I mixed in, you know, just life situations and trying to paint. I think going for five is, is really uh, an optimistic goal, but I think I can achieve it. And I think my process of just starting a piece, taking it as far as I can take it without being, feeling bogged down in terms of trying to get it done and trying to be a perfectionist with it and moving on to the next one, I think that's, that's the best way to go. Uh, that's working well for me in terms of my, how I feel about it. So I've watched a couple of videos or a couple of channels. AO Hammer, I want to just say... Uh, AO, thank you for your videos. You've been uh, inspirations of opening, you know, your new studio in, in Seattle and watching you go through your process and, and your artwork. So taking tips from her is, has been good. Uh, I just saw a new channel from a guy named, I think it's Mikel. Or, uh, I don't know how he pronounces his name, but he's an artist in, I believe, North Carolina. And he does like cartoon art. Uh, African American cartoon art, and it's it, his style is really unique and it's really cool, and I like his style of videos. I guess I can say that that I'm trying to break into YouTube and trying to figure YouTube out in terms of what kind of content people like to watch, and 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 what I I found is that people like to watch other people paint. I gotta kill this fly.
video will have some painting. I will like splice in just actual painting this. I'm actually gonna, I just start playing around with the, the shading and the shadows of our face, but I'm actually going to go over this. And after I looked at the reference photo, there's, uh, this tone is not so close to what the actual reference photo is. So I think I'm gonna go back over this with some gesso and then just come back with it again. Uh, and that's the beauty of using gesso. You can just cover over what didn't work for you and just try it again. So I'm gonna leave the main structure of her face, right? But I'm going to kind of try to fine tune it and get it just closer and closer to, to the reference photo. Uh, one thing I really like about going over what you've already worked on, it's kind of like a sculpture in a way, even though you're painting, you can start something and if it doesn't work, you can go back over it like sand it out. I use sandpaper. I'll just show you guys. I use a hundred grit sandpaper, just you know, common sandpaper. And I'll just go over and kind of take the paint down some and then go back over it with the paint that I want to use and just experiment and try new things. And, and that has worked well for me. So if you get one of my pieces of art, you will get a piece that has layers and layers and renditions of and versions of the actual end painting. But give me a second, I'm gonna grab the Prince piece and show you what I'm talking about in terms of my first piece, which is the Prince flower piece, which is a series of uh, Prince portraits that uh, I probably do like four or five of them. But this is one, this is what I'm gonna show you is the first one, if you've seen some of my other videos. I'm just gonna show you how far I got, because I don't think I've shown any videos of its latest level of progress. So let me grab that real quick and and bring that in. So this is the Prince piece, the Prince flower series, the first of about four pieces that I'm going to do with the subject matter being Prince. And had a lot of challenges with this piece in terms of his skin tone. I've talked about it before. Prince has really unique colored skin, so it's really hard to represent his skin accurately. It looks different in different light sources. So I still have a lot to do. This is a Versace styled shirt. And I, I don't know if it's Versace, this is from the movie Under the Cherry Moon. And I'm not sure if this is Versace shirt, but it really looks like a Versace shirt. And you know, as you probably all know, Versace's mansion is on South Beach here in Miami. That's kind of cool to have that tied into this piece because it, you know, this is Miami World Art. Having Prince's, the first piece that I do, and in that portrait, having him wear a Versace shirt from that reference photo is, is pretty cool. I plan to take this to the Versace Mansion, well actually to his old club, uh, Glam Slam, which is on Washington, on South Beach, and uh, just bring this out and just like take it in front of his his mansion and take some photos of it or a short video of it. Um, please comment on what you think about this piece. Let me get, kind of get out of the way and kind of show this to you. So. I'm semi proud of it. I, I, it's by no means where I want to want to end up in terms of my artwork. This is just like a, one of my first. This is my first piece back from a long hiatus of of not painting. So I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, if you're a Prince fan, please let me know what you think. If you're just an artist or someone who admires art, let me know what you think. By no means is this my best work. This is. You know, nowhere near my best work, and my goal is to get better and better. I think through painting this, one thing I discovered is I really enjoy painting flowers. So I plan to do a whole series of flower paintings, and then a, a combination of portraits and flowers. I think that would be really cool. And this is <laughs> this is actually a combination of a portrait and flower. So I plan to just continue to do that. I, I really enjoy trying to capture flowers in, in my paintings. 
And I plan to take a course. There's a lady on YouTube that has a online course in painting flowers and, and I plan to take that course and then you know, create beautiful flowers. Still have the background to do it in this one. This is like a first layer of the background. Really challenging to get the background so it didn't collide with the actual portrait. And, but the green really popped out. I really liked the way the green made him look. It brings out his skin tone. So I plan to do another coat of this green and bring in some purple. Maybe paint in one more smaller flower, one or two more flowers, just to balance it out. Or I might just go with these three flowers that are here, and that's it. That could be the case. But I plan to do this same exact painting, at least of, of Prince himself, in this position, over again. So I want to do this a couple times, just so I can get it to a point where I'm really happy with his skin tone and the details and everything. So this is just my first attempt on it. So I'm trying not to beat myself up in terms of how it looks and just go to the next one. Because you know, that perfectionist thing is tough to deal with as an artist. I just want to get this to a point where if it's at 75% of what I think I can do or even 70% and call it a day and then just go to the next one and try to get that one to 80, 85% and then try it again and try to get to a point where I'm really happy with it. I mentioned uh, an artist that I watch on YouTube and I noticed in her, some of her first artworks, they weren't as impressive as stuff she did after that, of, of course. So I think that's a good method to use. Just try to finish your piece of art and then see what it looks like and then just go to the next one. Don't get stuck on that one piece and try to make it perfect. Just kind of complete it and go to the next one and then in the next one try to increase the, you know, how it looks and, and how good it, it comes out and how it makes you feel, whatever. So this is my second piece. Again, the piece of Sade is under that. I hope you guys like and subscribe to the channel. It would really help out if you guys do. Look for me on the next video. And, uh, I guess I can say that you can check me out on all social media with Miami World Art. There's no spaces. It's just Miami World Art. It's exactly how it sounds. On Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. I have a Patreon. Uh, page that is the same thing patreon forward slash Miami world art I also have an Etsy store it's the same thing it's etsy.com forward slash Miami world art so if you like to check out any of my artwork on Etsy go ahead and do that and let me know it's really important that you comment if you can and let's let me know what you think about this artwork and my goal is really just to get my perfectionism you know, up to is the best I can do and give you guys the best possible artwork. If you're interested in buying this piece, you can contact me at miamiworldart at gmail.com or you can DM me on Instagram, Miami World Art, and just let me know what you want to do. I can do this in a custom format. I can redo this and give it to you in a, in a custom way. Like we can kind of communicate and you tell me exactly what you want. So it would be kind of like a commission based on an existing piece so I can do some customization on that. Or if you're interested in this piece for a future, its future outcome, uh, please let me know. This is actually, before I go, this one actually is the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain. I first watched Purple Rain at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. And I was not a Prince fan at the time. I was definitely not a Prince fan. And I just went because it was free. It was part of, you know, a class that I was in, and I went, and then I had a cousin, and she was, like, princed out. Like, I, her room actually had, like, you know, Prince albums everywhere. She was absolutely princed out. Like, she was a total Prince fan, and I didn't get it. Like, I just didn't get it. But when I watched the movie, when I watched Purple Rain, I, you know, I was really... My attitude and my perception of Prince changed, and I actually was able to see him live on South Beach at his Glam Slam Club in 2006. Saw him live in, in a really small, small crowd. It was, I mean, you know, it couldn't have been more than 300 people. I watched him perform. You know, literally feet from the stage and got to see him perform live and I had been a prince for years uh, before the, seeing him live 
and I will say that his actual performance, his live performance, I always had a perception or had a feeling for what Prince would be like live in terms of watching him perform, and he actually exceeded, you know, nowhere near. Like, his music is, is mind-blowing, and then when I actually watched him perform live, it was, it was, he took it, he took it there. You know, he actually did his whole performance, and then he left stage, no one really left, and, you know, it was kind of like the performance was over, and people just, because it's a club, so people just hung out and stayed there, and then in 45 minutes from the last song he did, he came back out and he did Purple Rain, and then he closed it, and that was, that was the last time I saw Prince.